Hello again, it's Tony Wright, First Love Christian Church, FLCC, and A.B. Wright Ministries. Look at here, y'all gonna have to help me out. This is just so much stuff. Here we are, day two of our 90-day uh, Bible study. Uh, we're coming from Genesis 17, chapter 1st verse through the 28th chapter 19 verse. Okay, so when we last left, Hagar had just given birth to a son named Ishmael. And uh, when Abram was, uh, he, he was already 86 years old. Now, as we enter into today's, uh, into in this day two reading, uh, we continue to develop the story of Abraham. Now, most of today's reading concerns Abraham. And to start this 17th chapter, God is renewing his covenant to Abram, right? Uh, uh, this, if you remember, is the third time that God is talking to Abram about his covenant. Remember Genesis 12 and Genesis 15. And in chapter 12, uh, 12 uh, God told him to go uh, to a land that he would show him and that he would make him a great nation, that he would be blessed, his name would be made great, uh, that he would be a blessing, and that God would bless those who bless Abram, curse those who curse it. Then in chapter 15, God told Abram uh, that his seed would be as impossible to count as the stars in heaven. Now, here in chapter 17, God is starting to provide some explicit detail for Abram. Again, God promised Abram that he would be the father of many nations. And as part of that covenant, God declares uh, that Abram will now be known as Abraham. God told him that he would have many descendants and that some of them would become kings. And God said he would keep the covenant with them, right? Even the land that they were now foreigners to, Canaan, would become the land of Abraham and his descendants. For Abraham's part, he and his descendants would only need to follow and obey God. As, as a sign of Abraham's people keeping their part of the covenant promise, though, every male child was to be circumcised when they were eight days old. <laughs> Anyone in the household, whether born into the family or were part of the family as a servant or as a slave, anyone needed to be circumcised. Further, any that uh, did not get circumcised, and were not, they were not keeping the promise. And therefore, they were not one of God's people. <laughs> Hoo-wee! Talk about pressure. Uh, then God told Abraham that from now on, uh, his wife would be called Sarah instead of Sarai, uh, and, and that God was going to bless her and that Abraham would have a son by her. <laughs> okay, that did it. <laughs> Abraham was game all the way up until God told him that. And his reaction was just like ours sometime when God tells us things that our little bitty mind just can't wrap around. Abraham broke out laughing. What? <laughs> Man, I'm almost 100 years old and Sarah is 90. She ain't about to have a child. Just let Ishmael uh, inherit the things that you promised me. Did you see that? You see how we try to help God out? Surely he couldn't have really meant what he just said. <laughs> and, and watch how God handled that. Uh, can I paraphrase? <laughs> well, I'm going to anyway, just like I always have been, right? God said, listen, you and Sarah will have a son. Write this down. And his name will be Isaac. And my everlasting promise, you know, the one I just told you about, where uh, my promise is to you and your descendants, that promise will live through him, Isaac, and his descendants. And just to show you that I got this, I'm still going to bless your other mess, I mean son, Ishmael. And he will also have many descendants. He will be the father of 12 princes, and Ishmael's family will be a great nation. But as for the promise that I'm making with you and your family, that will be for Isaac and his descendants forever. Oh, and by the way, he will be born around this time next year. <laughs> Boy, have you ever been in a situation where uh, God had to like grab you by the collar and just straighten you out? It usually comes when you've been in your smarty pants mode. So God uh, took you by the collar and he shook you in, in, into, uh, I'm back mode, <laughs> right? That's what happened to Abraham. When God finished talking, Abraham had circumcision religion. 
<laughs> the Bible says that on that same day, uh, Ishmael, who was about 13 years old at the time, got circumcised. Abraham got circumcised. His servants got circumcised. As a matter of fact, he went into what I like to call Oprah mode. You get a circumcision and you get a circumcision and you get a circumcision. He was circumcising everybody that, had, uh, that could be circumcised. Now guess what? <laughs> Sarah hadn't received the good news yet. You know, that at the springy young age of 90, that she was going to get pregnant. And God knew. <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? You know how sometimes God has, has given you a word. And, and after he's called you up and you've accepted things, you still wrestle with how in the world am I going to break this news to my spouse? Have you ever been there? <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyway, God knew that Brother Abraham was going to have a little trouble with this one. So God sent him some help. The Bible says Abraham was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. Can you see that? I bet you this brother was trying to figure out how in the world that was he going to break this news to Sarah. And, and how he was going to convince Sarah that God said, you know, all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, out of nowhere, three men appeared. Boom. Abraham ran out to meet him. <laughs> Sometimes you have no idea how this is it, but you just know that this is it. <laughs> yep. A Abraham knew that this is it. <laughs> so he jumped up and ran to meet him. Long story short, when Sarah heard what they said about uh, her and Abraham having a baby, she laughed. Uh, but she laughed to herself and, and only thought how crazy that sounded. But God busted her out. <laughs> and he asked Abraham why she was laughing and saying how absurd it is to think that at this old age that she could bear a child. Then God asked, oh, and I love this one. Uh, when times are at their darkest, when every door that you've tried seems locked, when every turn that you've tried to make seems blocked, just remember, just remember this one. God asks, is there anything too hard for God? <laughs> when the time comes for it to happen, Sarah will have a son. <laughs> I, I need to shut this thing down right now. If God said it will happen, it will happen. I don't care how you feel about it. I don't care what you think about it. None of that. It's just going to happen. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, this scared the bejesus out of Sarah. So she did the only thing that she could do. She lied. <laughs> said, I didn't laugh. But God said, yes, you did. Whew. We, we got to move on. Sodom and Gomorrah. I, I, I got to talk a little bit about Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> now, now, I know you've all heard about Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, but God was going to destroy those cities. It's just too much stuff going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Didn't I say it? Too much stuff. Just too much. And God pondered as to whether or not he should warn Abraham. <laughs> but then he went on and told him. So Abraham, this brother right here, he asked God, God, are you going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? It's just not like you to slay the righteous with the wicked and treat them the same way. Uh, that's just so unlike you, God. So God says, if there are 50 righteous, I'll spare the place for them. So Abraham said, <laughs> okay, right? <laughs> nope, <laughs> not this brother. Abraham goes on to try to barter with God. Now, <laughs> you think that this brother is at the county fair, bidding for stuffed animals. <laughs> okay, 50? Uh, what about 45? Would you save them for 45? Yep, 45. Okay, 45. Would you save them for 40? Yep. Next thing you know, Abraham has, has haggled God all the way down to 10. Yep, I'll spare them for 10. I'm just shaking my head. <laughs> now, you know uh, who is in Sodom, right? Abraham's nephew, Lot. The same joker that was with him 
when he pulled off the scam against Pharaoh. You remember him and Lot. They pulled off that get rich quick scam against Pharaoh. Now, so anyway, Lot gets a get out of Sodom free card for him and his family. He was told by the angels to leave. Don't stop in the plains, but go to the mountains and don't look back. <laughs> I, I, I wonder if that's where that phrase came from. Don't look back. But anyway, uh, or, 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 or he would be consumed. Now, I don't know what Brother Lot had going on in Sodom. Uh, but the angels had to put this dude out of the city. They had to grab him by the hand and put him out of the house. He didn't leave on his own. And as they fled the safety uh, uh, of the city Zoar, Zoar uh, God let Sodom and Gomorrah have it. He lured the boom on them, right? Fire and brimstone, baby. But, but, but Lot's wife looked back and, yep, she turned to a pillow of salt. So, anyway, uh, now Lot has left the city of Zoar and is afraid for his life. So he and his two daughters are living in a cave. But his two daughters were concerned that Lot had no heir. Remember, Lot is a wealthy dude now. Remember the scam? Uh, but he had no sons. So his daughters figured out what to do. Uh-huh. So they got him drunk. And the oldest daughter took advantage of his drunken state. And she got pregnant. Then the next night, the younger daughter did the same thing. And she got pregnant. Now, <laughs> problem solved, right? The oldest daughter birthed Moab, ancestor to the Moabites. And the younger daughter birthed uh, Benami, who is the ancestor to the Amorites. But I wish somebody would please help me understand what kind of ridiculousness was going on in Sodom. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, back, back, back to Brother Abraham. What in the world has he been up to? Well, Abraham is venturing to the country of Yoar, ruled by King Abimelech. And as he was entering Gerar, you would not guess what Brother Abraham did. <laughs> yep, Abraham introduced Sarah as his sister. Of course. <laughs> Where have he, we heard this one before? And, and of course, Abimelech sent for her and took Sarah in. But God intervened early this time. I, I still wonder how Abraham really felt about it, though. <laughs> so God told Abimelech that he was a dead man walking if he touched this married woman. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, now, Brother Abraham was... was uh, uh, had has King Abimelech uh, in a situation thinking that God is feeling uh, some certain kind of way about him. So he tells God, Abimelech does, hey, uh, I, I didn't know. Uh, he said, uh, uh, and, and she said, uh, so, so, so how I know? <laughs> and God said, I know. That's why I told you. Just restore her back. Don't touch her. And you'll live. But if you don't give her back, it's over. So Abimelech warned all his people, uh, but had to go front Brother Abraham. Man, are you? what are you trying to do to us? Uh, what have we ever done to you? What the heck were you thinking? So, so Brother Abraham tries to worm his way out of it. I, I, I mean, he apologizes. My bad. It's just that sometimes I think that I might have a hard time dealing with Brother Abraham. <laughs> uh, but look at what Brother Abraham said. Well, I was afraid that if I told you the truth, that y'all would kill me and try to take her. But but she really is my sister, though. We have different moms, uh, but the same dad. And, and, and I did marry her anyway. So since I did marry her, uh, uh, technically, uh, you know, so... When we're traveling, uh, we travel as brother and sister. What? <laughs> you see, that's why I'm just a little suspicious of this brother. Anyway, they ironed out their differences, kind of smoothed things over, so to speak. And, and, and 
Abimelech uh, blessed Abraham uh, with some more goods and sent him off and basically told him he could live anywhere in his land that he wanted to live. But we got to move on. <laughs> so Sarah did get pregnant. Woo-wee! <laughs> Can you imagine the mess that might have occurred if God hadn't stepped in to stop Abimelech from falling for the okie doke? <laughs> Talk about saved by the bell. So along comes Isaac. And, and, and wouldn't you know it? Strife returns to Brother Abraham clan. Sarah thought she spotted Ishmael looking a certain kind of way at Isaac. <laughs> and she told the brother uh, that his son and the baby's mama had to go. <laughs> This was a real painful thing for Brother Abraham, uh, but not as painful as things were going to be if they stayed. So he, well, <laughs> yeah, he put them out. <laughs> now, when he put them out, Hagar, she was just tore up. After 14 years, and this was Brother Abraham's firstborn, but they were put out. Just because Sarah finally was able to have a son with her 90-year-old hind end. <laughs> but God came along to console Hagar. He came along to console Hagar and to reassure her that he would make a great nation out of Ishmael. Now, for those of us that might be a little slower on the uptake, Ishmael, Hagar's son, shared his mother's Egyptian or Arab bloodline. And Isaac, of course, was Jewish. And God promised that they each would be made great nations. And the nation of Israel and the Arab nations, each having descended from those two half-brothers, both share a lineage back through brother Abraham. <laughs> and if you look into the Middle East to this day, uh, these brother nations still have more than their fair share of residual, what we often refer to as baby mama drama. Now, this is just too much. Uh, I, 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 look, look, I got to go. But, but stay tuned to our social media platforms and I'll keep posting. I know I owe you more stuff on day two stuff, right? But I told you it's just too much stuff. Day three reading is Genesis 28 chapter 20th verse through 40th chapter. 11th verse. Uh, I'm going to keep posting. You just keep reading uh, and keep looking for the post. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. They don't want to miss this. This stuff is getting good. But, but you'll keep getting little snippets about everything on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. But to get the full scoops, hit YouTube at FLCC Rock Hill. In the meantime, we appreciate you helping us take ministry back to the first love. See you soon.